Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Fourth World Special Segment. This is a Friday 4 o'clock segment, but basically we had some technical difficulties and we're presenting at 4.30. What we decided to do since I'm home is do a Q&A. I get so many questions from people on the, the computer uh, and all walks of life when I'm out and about. So, uh, you know, I try to answer as truthful as I can, but uh, I wanted to share that out there with the world. So we're going to do some Q&A on George Mozzarella's Fourth World Prison segment. And let's go. Okay, because we have many, many, many questions. I don't know if I can get to them all. Okay, this is from Joanne Sanders. Well, a little bit of Joanne. We were kids together way back in uh, grammar school and grade school in South Jersey. Beautiful lady, good friend, lover. She says, Georgie. Any desire yet to sleep outdoors or in a real bed? I know you're taking in the sounds, sights, smells, and beauty outside in the tent, but curious of this. Well, uh, no, I have no desire at all yet to sleep indoors. I'm out of prison basically almost three months, and I only slept in a bedroom, a real bedroom, twice. I sleep outdoors, and I've been doing some speaking uh, I've been invited uh, for public speaking engagements, etc. And I actually take uh, I take my uh, my sleeping bag with me, and I make arrangements that uh, there's some patio. If there's a hotel room, there's a patio I can go out, or someone's home. And you know, I sleep I sleep outdoors. That's what I'm about. And uh, you know, I do my I wash, shower outdoors, and I just love every minute, Joanne. I'm the outdoor kid. Anyway, it's moving along. Okay, let's go to a mail. Mike Melillo, what has been your biggest adjustment so far to life outside of prison? Well, everything from minute things to major things, everything's an adjustment, Mike, everything. And what you have to do is, you know, uh, uh, don't leap, you know, don't leap. I, I relax. Whatever I do in conversations, action, I, I make, I think about it because I'm just, I'm just so rusty. I'm just like a kid, uh, a kid growing up. But I manage it. I manage it. It's, it's not easy, but I've been managing it. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, Maria Lombardo. Good morning, my friend. How were you able to stay positive while in prison? She says you're amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, you stay positive by, uh, you have to grow up real fast in prison. Even though I don't care what age you go, it seems that men, when men go to prison, they become uh, children again. Don't ask me why they argue about any little thing, their feelings get hurt about any little thing. So I, I wasn't going to be like that. I did positive and I did a lot of uh, educational stuff. I did a lot of personal uh, curriculum for me you know, worked out, writing, teaching, and uh, strangely to say, uh, was it easy? Absolutely not, because I was never, never getting out, and I did so many positive things day after day, month, year, years, decades, so on and so forth. So sometimes, uh, now free, I look back and I said, how the hell did you do it? I don't know, you know, it's in you. It's in you, and I did it, and I'm here to talk about it. Okay, let's go to uh, Denise Schultz. Were you shocked at the goings on around the world in this day and age? Quite different, and even a shocker, I bet. Well, absolutely, everything was different. You know, the dress was different, the cars were different. It was just, just so much, so much... Uh, that you could not imagine, you could not imagine. And uh, I adjust, not every day, every hour of every day, because I'm out there, you know, I'm doing things, you know, and uh, it's just amazing. I'd like to do the little things, you know, I'm not out there trying to take over the world, my foolishness years ago, just the little things I enjoy. Okay, uh, Debbie Papa. How do you feel walking out of those doors? What was your first thoughts? And yes, your hands. Well, thank you. Well, incidentally, Debbie, I'm going to have to give you up. You're my uh, 
first uh, original contracted date from what we did on the, on the raffle thing, on the bidding thing, and I, I, as a gentleman, I gave you my word, we will get together and have our pleasant date, I promise you. Okay, uh, and your question was, uh, how do you feel walking? Well, I walked out of prison uh, at 4.15 on October the 5th. Uh, my two beautiful sisters were waiting there, and my attorney, and I marched right out, marched right out. So much so, after two days of my lawyer around, he looked at me and says, are you all right? Uh, are you from another world? Are you a Martian? I said, what? so what's up? He says, you act like you haven't been in prison. I said, that's who I am. That's my demeanor. I says, uh, I never gave up. I believed and prayed that this day would come, and it came, and here I am. Here I am, world, and uh, I go for it. Okay, let's moving along. Uh, Nanette de George Cogento. Cogento. She's a wonderful woman, very beautiful woman, married to a dear friend of mine. Uh, I recognize by the last name, and her, and she asked, I think I'll save my questions for when we are sitting on my sun deck looking at the mountains. Now, there's a real good friend, lovely woman, her and her husband. Uh, within the, the hour that I got out, they were reaching out and welcoming me to the home. They live in this beautiful home in the mountains of, of the Northeast, and uh, they welcome me with open arms, and they call me. And they want me there, and I will be. I promise them I will be there, and we will sit on that sun deck. And and Lynette is a good cook, and we will have some great times. And I will be there. I love you and Mike, and I will be there. Okay, moving along. Let's go to another guy, a good man, Tony Lance Chu, good buddy of mine. Wrote me in prison. Uh, what were the biggest culture shock changes you noticed from going in and out of the '80s to what's changed now in the world? Well. Well, you know, again, the dress, the cars, the, the structure of buildings, it, it's just so much. It was like uh, I, was, I was landed on here from another planet. And uh, I look at every little thing. I notice every little thing. It's just amazing. But, Tony, uh, the, the interaction with the people is not like it used to be. I don't know if I'm speaking correct, but it's just not... When before it was just you more more come on more camaraderie, a little bit. I walk in places and I see couples at dinner and they're they're on their phones and they're not even you know making romance. Really. I mean, if you're on a date with your wife or girl, you you want to pay attention to her. You want to look in her eyes and hold your hand. I mean, romance is uh, has always been here and it should always be. Uh, okay, and let's go to. Uh, Joanne Lezizi, did you lose, she says, did you, did you lose hope and your spirit being in it? What I mean, you weren't away a few years. You were, you weren't away a few years. You were away many, many years, and I couldn't imagine. Uh, did you always think you were coming home? I never gave up, uh, Joanne. I never gave up at all. I fought uh, mind and spirit and body. I never, never missed a workout. I never uh, missed a class that I taught. And one day uh, I can share something personal. I had a death in the family, very crushing to me. And I have a broken heart still today. And that day I had to graduate a large class. And when you graduate a large class, you, you honor them with a certificate. And that certificate enhances them uh, in their program. It can get them transferred close to home and help them in court. So uh, I graduated uh, that class. I had sunglasses on, and tears were coming down my face. So, you know, you never give up. You never give up. And I'm not bragging. There's been men, better men than me that died in prison, and there's been men in, uh, in all sorts of, in the military, that never give up. So, you know, it's just in some of us, and thank God I had that. Okay, let's go to Dana Fisher. What was life like the few years before you went to prison? Well, it was the wrong life. I mean, a lot of people uh, think that I was this major criminal. Well, I was only a criminal for three years. I, I worked all my life in the family business, and then uh, there were some situations in Philly, some violent situations that changed the course of many lives. One of the lives was mine, okay? And I made the mistake to do the wrong things. Then I got caught up in a political 
double cross or attorney double cross, etc., etc. That'll all be explained someday uh, when my book comes out. So uh, that's basically it. You know, I made mistakes and uh, I paid for it. Paid for it more than most. Okay, uh, Linda S C H Schaller Schaller. Who picked you up? I would love to know your first thought when you knew you were getting to go free. Living there so long, how did you feel about leaving? Well, uh, my two sisters, my two beautiful sisters, uh, uh, Dolores and uh, Marianne, waited for me with my attorney for from 8.15 to 4.15 in the hot sun on the prison parking lot. Hot sun. And I was watching them from afar, from another window. I knew that that was the release day, but I had to get out by a certain time. If I didn't, I would be kept at midnight. And uh, it was just a very, very uh, dramatic, traumatic day. And, and when, uh, when I walked out, I had my chest out, my head up, and I just rushed into the arms of these loved ones. And, uh, and I just adjusted, adjusted very quickly because I know I, want, I didn't want them to see any weakness or me falter in any way. Okay, we'll make one more question because, again, this is all new to me. Uh, I hope to continue this. And incidentally, at the end of the month, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be starting a blog radio show called A Shoulder to Cry On. And it's basically going to be dedicated to women and men, but basically women, and addresses loneliness. I found out, I went away a young man, I came out older, and loneliness is a big factor with American women. So much so, bad relationships, unwarranted marriages, drugs, alcohol, prison, and death. And I've been in a lot of conversations with the women uh, that uh, have moved on in their life, and uh, loneliness is a big factor. And then again, uh, you might say, well, what's your connection, George? My connection to loneliness is, uh, I was in a cell for 32 years, and all I seen was the walls, and from loneliness, I became a poet. So I believe that's my connection, and I hope the show will do well. And we're going to start that, uh, hopefully, we're going to do some dry runs next week, and we should have it up by the end of the month. Again, it's a blog radio show. You would call in. And I would answer your questions, and it's called a shoulder to cry on. Okay, one last question, ladies and gentlemen, and this is from Victor and our Dawn. How did you get by knowing that your Aunt Mary, Uncle George, Dad, Son, your uncles and aunts, all passed away while away? Well, uh, Victor, uh, don't uh, let anybody tell you that uh, things doesn't bother a guy. That you, 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 you. you you humble yourself, you pray, and you weep. And uh, as a writer, I wrote a lot of the eulogies, and I addressed them to uh, right at the funeral parlors and conference calls from the prison. And uh, so much so, a lot of deaths in prison that I wrote the eulogies and I spoke in a chapel. So uh, even though you're in prison, you, want, you pay your respects to those who pass on. You don't forget them, and you do your best that you can, best that you can to basically... Sounds callous, you have to swallow it, you have to swallow it, and you have to move on. Because no matter what kind of hurt that you receive, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up in that cell. You will wake up in that cell. Anyway, I enjoyed the Q&A, ladies and gentlemen. We will do it again. Let me, you know, uh, I'll put it out there. You come with your questions. And like I said, I'm preparing myself to start doing a lot out there, like I said, public speaking, radio, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for your time. Welcome to George Martorano's Fourth World Prison Seven, and everyone have a nice day.